Joe, and this is Embedded. So photojournalism is a field that has interested me for a really long time. What I really like about it is that photojournalists have to choose what to put on the page. There's not enough room for everything, so they have to make some sort of edit somewhere. And often they have to pick between maybe a photo that represents their experience or a photo that has a better compositional quality. So Embedded is a VR photography game about journalistic choice. In Embedded, you play as an embedded photojournalist that's with a team of soldiers during the Vietnam War. You ride along with them, capture what you see, choose what millions will see back home, and uh, yeah. So there's two main phases of gameplay. We have shooting photographs and asking questions. In the first phase, it's an on-rails experience where you're uh, taking photos of what you see as you ride along with a team of soldiers. In the second phase, you are walking around, or actually you're not walking around anymore. You're sitting down at interviewing soldiers and civilians about their experience. So in the first phase, you're taking uh, photos of struggle, conflict, and triumph. It's, it's on rails, you're going on a set path through these environments, and the photos are judged based on their sentiment, so whether they're pro or anti-war or somewhere in the middle, and their quality, so how well they follow uh, photographic compositional rules. And at the end of this phase, you choose which photos are going to be seen back home and published in a newspaper at the end of the level. So you could be taking pictures of you know, scenes like this, where children are fleeing from their village out of very anti-war sentiment. Or you could be taking pictures of soldiers doing heroic acts, which would have very pro-war sentiment. The main inspiration for this phase comes from a game called Pokemon Snap. Mechanically, it's very similar, but the tone is obviously very different. In the second phase, you're asking questions. So you're interviewing soldiers and civilians, and uh, asking them different questions that are phrased in either a pro or anti-war way. And the answers that you get from them in the form of quotes also have sentiment that will be used for the article at the end of the game. There's some uh, concept art of some people that you could encounter in the game. At the, at the end of this cycle of taking photos and asking questions, you publish an article. So you have an article that has your photos and quotes in it, and the text of this article reflects the overall sentiment of your photos and quotes that you've collected throughout the game. And the prestige of the publication reflects the overall quality of the photos. So you have this tension between maybe choosing between a photo that you feel better represents your uh, feelings about the conflict, and maybe a photo that has a better quality. So this uh, conflict between like the prestige and the trying to represent how you really feel. So under the hood, we're using Unity to develop for VR. We're on Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. The on rails aspect of the game has kept our asset count pretty low. You know, we're not building out a whole jungle. We're just building out like one path through the jungle. And the goal is to have three levels by the end of the AGP. Uh, currently, we have one and a half or so. Our sensor analysis is all done with authoring, so there's no fancy AI here that's that's judging sentiment of a photo. We're just we assign scores to subjects in the frame, and then we see which subjects are in the frame and base the sentiment of the photo on that. Our photo uh, quality analysis is done by analyzing the what the position of subjects in the frame. Again, not using you know, fancy AI because we don't have to because we have the three information. So this is the rule of thirds. This is how we judge composition in case you're unaware. If a subject is in the frame and is aligned with these thirds lines, then it's considered a good photo. And so this is the, the uh, heuristic that we're using to judge our photos. And this is our team. Uh, Yael Swerdlow, a special note, is a Pulitzer Prize winning photographer is on a Pulitzer Prize winning team with the LA Times covering the LA riots. And she has been helping us understand what it's really like to be a photojournalist out in the field. Um, yeah, that's embedded. Uh, I guess I can talk about some of the st stuff we accomplished this semester. So basically, we had all of our features in at the end of last semester. And, then, and a lot of this semester has just been about polishing those things and also about getting 
more art in and more, more content in the game. So we, at the beginning of the semester, we recorded a bunch of motion capture data, and it's been kind of a struggle to actually use that in the game so far. So we have all this data, but you have to clean it up because there's a lot of, there'll be like a lot of weird, jagged jumpiness in the animations. And so for a long time, it, we had trouble finding someone to clean it up. But this week, we got someone to clean it up who started that process, so we're really happy about that. But you'll notice in the game right now, there's a lot of static people and maybe just like really simple animations. But in the coming weeks, we're going to be getting those motion capture animations in there, and it's going to look really good. And I think that's kind of been our biggest issue this semester so far has been the bit that motion capture data and trying to find someone to uh, to get it in there. We also added a, a tutorial that's not just like a screen that just gives you instructions like that actually teaches you how to do the thing, so that's been cool too. And um, yeah, I guess we'll just get to the demo now. So it's back here. Khan is going to be demonstrating for us. So right from the start here, you can see you can adjust your height too if, uh, on the right there if you, if you need to. And we're going to select new game. And so we start off, uh, the whole framing device for our story is that you're like a, a veteran photojournalist kind of looking back at your, your career. So uh, in our tutorial level, you, You have uh, this phone, and you get a text message from your grandpa or from your granddaughter. That says, "Hi, grandpa. I have a very important photography assignment, and we are studying the role of thirds. Could you send me a photo that I can use as a reference?" So this is intended to teach the player how to shoot rule of thirds photos. So we have um, the camera here, and you can see if uh, depending on the glow, like what is a good rule of thirds photo or not. So if it's red, it's bad, yellow's okay, and green is, is good. So, yeah. It can take like a random photo and that's not going to do anything. Like yeah, until you take a good yeah. picture, it won't advance. So yeah. This looks great, Grandpa. I will try to shoot like this for my homework. Thank you so much. And that's our tutorial. And then, hi, honey. Found some of your old photography stuff from the glory days. Thought you might like to take a look at it before we put it in storage. So then you can grab the camera, and that takes you to our first shooting level. Um, I guess the audio is not properly connected, but it works. Um, well, so as you can see, you can you're riding through these, and you can take pictures. Let me close that console. So yeah, I mean, a lot of this stuff is just, uh, you know, we don't have the animations for them right now, so there's a lot of things in T-poses and stuff like that, but those will all be fully animated soon, as soon as that uh, motion capture data comes in, should have someone working on. This time we have a whole new set of assets for our environment that really add a lot to it. So we have like this tropical village pack that has all these uh, environmental things like the huts and all the foliage and all that good stuff. 
What would the audio be? Uh, right, it's like a, uh, it's like a war ambient audio. It's like there's, you can hear a bunch of gunfire and explosions and people like yelling commands and stuff like that. Um, yeah. But we will have audio in the next scene as well, so is there a way to get up? Right now, or should we just go with it? Um, I don't know. <laughs> if it's not working now, then. Yes. Yeah. So that scene is supposed to be representative of the My Lai massacre. So a lot of the um, images and, and scenes in that are based on real photographs from the time of that uh, historical event. So then in this section, you can choose which photographs you want to submit for publication. On the uh, vibe, you're using the, the touchpad to scroll through these. Did, did you guys consider showing them like negatives instead of in developer form in there? Yeah, I, we haven't tested we haven't tested that. That was a thought we had, but it just I don't know if it would be good or bad. I yeah, it, it just seemed it. like some yeah, I don't think a a regular person <laughs> would take to that. I, I think uh, hard to judge them unless you're like hardcore about photography, you probably don't care. <laughs> so, yeah. Even settings. Oh, yeah. You hover yeah. over it, it goes to normal. Color. It's a cheat code. Oh. To <laughs> yeah. So in this scene, you can. Uh, this is the interview section now, so you can select uh, like which uh, person you want to interview on this notepad here. And then you can select the question. And there's voice acting here, but there's no sound right now, so. And for each of the questions, there, there's three questions that are all different flavors of the same idea. So uh, you, can, you can see like the first one will be an anti-war phrasing of the idea, the middle one will be more neutral, and the last one would be more pro-war. So you can ask questions. Of the same same idea that's phrased in a different way. So you can't click this one until he's done talking, but. Let's just, I mean, there's two more like this without audio, it's really boring to watch, so let's just move on to the next scene. So then this is the, uh, you can see your article is hanging on the wall in your house, and you can uh, point to it, click on it, it comes towards you, and you can, you can read what it says, and... So because you, this took really uh, determined to ask pro-war questions and took uh, pro-war photos, this is, a, this is the pro-war article for this encounter. And yeah, that's, that's the game. Oh yeah, and then you also get uh, a letter at the end of, so we'll have, when we have three levels, at the end of each level you'll get an article like that, and then at the end of the whole game you get a letter from someone who's photos uh, have impacted their life in some way. So this is, right now, because this is the end of the game, you, we also have this letter that, uh, I don't remember what this one is. <laughs> I haven't read these in a while. But yeah, it's, it's something, because the article is pro-war, the letter is also going to be something to a pro-war effect. And that's the game so far, so thank you. taking the pictures to know whether or not they're taking a patriotic or an anti-war photo? Uh, there's none. It's up to you to 
to know what kind of photo you're as you're taking it. Mm -hmm. Then afterwards, the uh, the feedback is the article. So okay, feedback is the article. Yeah, and so, also we're planning on having uh, like at the when you submit your photos, you'll get like a you'll get a phone call from your editor that also he will be he'll give you some feedback that's like on the quality and on the uh, sentiment. So he'll give you a call and say like, oh, these are great photos and like they really show how the U.S. is messing it up over there. Or they, you could say like, these are terrible photos, but, um, and it shows how great the troops are doing or something, you know, something like that. So you also get some sort of immediate feedback once you submit the photos. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Why VR? Um, well, so we are actually are something I didn't mention was that we also have a not a, a not VR version. So why VR? Because this the the mechanics that we have really suit themselves for that. You know, because one of the main things that you can do in VR is look around a 360 space, and that's one of the main things you're doing in this game is looking around a 360 space. So it didn't feel like we were, it felt like a natural fit. It didn't feel like we had to smash our mechanics to fit this mold. It just, it just kind of worked. So we decided to go with that. And then you know, on top of that, like we're, de we're developing for VR first, but we also have non-VR controls like built on top of that as a secondary thing as well. But yeah, that, that's why we chose here. Um, have you considered having any sort of pushback against the player's uh, sort of like pro-war, anti-war stance? The, the, it seems like the way that the game is set up, mm -hmm. sort of however you as a player play it, the game only gives you positive feedback uh, about sort of that aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, is that intentional? Some of the letters that you get at the end aren't positive. Okay. So some of them will be like... I think that one actually says like, my son died in Vietnam because your photos like caused a surge of troops uh, or something. Like, so if you took pro-war photos, you might get that letter that is uh, scolding you for your choices. But then I think for all those letters actually, um, there's a positive and a negative version and it chooses a random one. Um, so like if you, there's like a positive and a negative, pro-war, neutral, and anti-war, actually. So, so there, there is uh, that Got feedback, it. yeah. So to expand on that, uh, I think that really what this is driving at is uh, what, where the tension of the game is. Because the gameplay mechanics is, are, are, is clearly established. We, it's uh, take a, an aesthetically pleasing photograph with anti-war or pro-war sentiments. But then, whenever you're preparing for any kind of a challenge, there has to be a challenge uh, presented. And in this case, there is no challenge. You simply just take pictures at random and then you get a result. So um, I think that what would really make the game more interesting and compelling is if there was a, uh, a component of the game in which you are set with a challenge. So for example, it begins with the text saying, um, oh, I was moved by the photography you did back in the day, but one of the things I noticed is that you never really, you never really gave an anti-war um, angle with your photographs. And then the pretext becomes, wow, what would I have done differently? And then the mission starts, and then the goal is, uh, take five anti-war pictures, and or, 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 or beat your anti-war high school, and then so the tension becomes, try to do this thing. Uh, there might also be a finding, a, a, a finding private line moment where the challenge is not to take pro-war, anti-war, but there's a missing soldier that needs to be commemorated, and we know that he was at this event, and do you have any recollection of him? And then you go back in time again and relive that moment, taking the pictures as though you're doing it for the first time. Whatever the challenge is, but establishing kind of a challenge 
in order to uh, create some kind of gameplay tension. Okay. Um, I mean, I wouldn't say... I, I, part of the goal of the game is to get people to want to play it multiple times and, and experience all of the different endings. And, you know, we have, so we have all these different articles and, and letters that you can get. And so I want players to be able to play the game. And, and I don't want there to be a win or, or a lose state with this. I mean, I want... Because part, part of the message of the game is also just about, like, here's how media can impact how people see uh, an event. And so I want you to play through it one time, maybe get, get some article and then, and then think, oh, what if I play through it again? But this time I focused only on the anti-war And events. is that what players are doing? We haven't done enough testing to that okay. I can definitively So say. in the absence of having done that testing, I'm going to suggest that players tend to have their own set patterns. So somebody is going to approach this game, and more likely than not, I mean, there are certainly uh, counterexamples to this, but most players are going to either have a pro-war or anti-war bias going sure. into the game. That's how they're going to take photographs. And if they play it a second time, they're going to play it the same way unless the game gives them some reason to change their behavior. And so that's something that you might think about. What are what could be in there that pro it seems to me like having your editor at the beginning of the level give you a randomly generated suggestion of what you what the article that you have pitched or what they want you to write about so that it prompts you to try something that might not be what your instincts are. Mm -hmm. Actually mm -hmm you're going to get more players who see more of the endings than if you just leave it open as a sandbox. Right. And you did yeah. touch on that, by the way, when you said you play through it one time, and then you get a letter, and then the, user, the, the player says, oh, what if I had done it differently? Yeah. But that's exactly the, I, the point, is you need to compel the player right. to right. want to make a different choice. Yeah, I, I, I see that. I, I, I like that idea of, Right now, it's kind of we're putting it all on the player to have that moment of oh, what if I did it differently? But if we can somehow prompt them to think that, then we can get that reaction out of them, which is what we're going for. So yeah, I, 